Here are four biblical differences between actively waiting for your spouse versus passively waiting for your spouse. Number one, actively waiting involves preparation. Passively waiting involves procrastination. Waiting is wasted when you're not wisely using it to prepare for the future. When Jesus was teaching us about how to prepare ourselves to take up our cross and follow him, he said, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. While Jesus was not talking about marriage here, he was using a principle that applies to all of life. We need to be planning for what we hope to experience in the future. So in context, Jesus was saying, if you hope to remain faithful to me, you have to plan accordingly. You have to count the cost before taking up your cross so that you are prepared for the trials ahead. Likewise, when we're thinking about preparing for marriage, we need to think ahead and actually plan for the outcome that we hope occurs one day in the relationship context. So when someone is passively waiting, they will be procrastinating on working on the character development that they know needs to occur before they could actually thrive in marriage. When someone is actively waiting, they will also be examining themselves and using this time of waiting wisely so that they're preparing themselves to thrive in the future marriage they hope God will bless them with one day. Number two, actively waiting involves working hard and leaving the results to God. Passively waiting involves not working hard, but still expecting the results from God. Christians often get confused when the topic of works comes up. The Bible is crystal clear that we are not saved by our works. We are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. However, scripture is also crystal clear that when we are saved, God has good works prepared for us to do. Additionally, Christians often confuse the two different things of working hard and seeing results for that work. Working hard is something you have to choose to do, but the results of that work still depend on God. So yes, God does want us to work hard, but he would never want us to take credit for anything good that happens because of the work we've done. Only God deserves the glory because he's the one who produces the results. So when you're actively waiting, for God to bring your future spouse into your life. You will be doing the hard work necessary that God is leading you to do, and you will give God the glory for any good results that occur. So for example, you'll be putting in the work to meet other eligible Christian singles. You'll be putting in the work to take that next step with someone you have romantic interest in. You'll be putting in the work to go through a wise dating process so you can get the discernment you need from the Lord to gauge whether or not this is the right person for you. And then you'll have to wait for the results from God. If you're passively waiting, however, you just won't be doing these wise steps that require hard work and you'll still be expecting God to give you the results you're hoping for. Number three, actively waiting for God to bring your future spouse into your life involves discernment and using good judgment. Passively waiting involves wishful thinking and wild interpretations. God is going to speak to you about who to marry. He's gonna give you the confirmation you need. He's gonna give you the wisdom you need to actually do the things that need to happen for a relationship to thrive in reality. And all of that confirmation and discernment is going to require effort on your part. Notice what Hebrews 5.14 says about discernment. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now, of course, I'm not saying it's bad to ask God for a sign, but it's just immature and a lot of times laziness that prevents people from using the means that God normally speaks through to communicate. Whereas it's a lot easier to just say, wow, I saw a cloud in the sky in the shape of a heart. That must mean God is saying yes about this relationship. Now, on the other hand, it's a lot harder to set up a date to go on with this person or to, you know, say yes to a man's invitation and actually go on the date, interact, gauge whether or not it's going well, think about it later, that's a lot harder than just looking at a cloud and interpreting it however you want to. So it's a lot easier to ask for a dream 
that God would just speak to you about the future regarding this person. It's a lot harder, however, to interact with this person in the flesh and get real information because you're actually interacting with this person. So actively waiting involves good judgment and biblical discernment and passively waiting involves this wishful thinking and reading into things that don't really mean anything. Now again, I'm not saying God can't speak in these other ways like dreams or through different signs that require some extra interpretation. That's just not normal and those things need to be backed up by biblical evidence and things that the Holy Spirit is really saying through scripture. And number four, actively waiting involves revolving your life around glorifying God, whereas passively waiting involves just revolving your life around what you don't have. Waiting on God should never result in you waiting to glorify God. There are going to be times where you just have to wait for the Lord to produce the results and to send the signs and to give you the next step to take. But there is never going to be a time where God is telling you to wait to bring honor to him and for his name's sake. And practically speaking, just waiting for the Lord to bring you something is one of the worst things you could do to actually receive that thing. Because biblically, God blesses us when we have faithfully stewarded what he's already given us. So when you're living your life for the glory of God, you are stewarding well what God has provided for you right now. And practically speaking, that's usually the time where God pairs you with that other person he's been waiting to pair you with because you're both on the same road seeking to glorify God and he wants to partner you with someone to make your effectiveness even greater for his namesake. A thumbs up helps this content spread to other people who might need to see it. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.